The point of tissue culture. Everyone in the cannabis industry is suddenly talking about tissue culture. Tissue culturing is a specialized skill that requires expensive equipment. And yet, propagating a cannabis plant is as easy as snipping off a stem and sticking it in a cup full of dirt. So why do we bother spending all this money for the same outcome? What's the point? Space savers. Tissue culturing allows you to propagate in far less space than traditional agriculture, square feet rather than acres. It's much less resource intensive in other ways as well. Instead of growing many plants from seed, you can use one plant to make many smaller plants for cultivation, allowing you to propagate in far higher numbers. For the cannabis industry, being able to cut down on the plant material used to propagate is important because those mother plants are not cheap. Disease freeze. Tissue culturing is also a way to grow plants that are free of viruses. You might have heard about hop latent viroid. It's a virus-like disease that's really difficult to eradicate because a viroid is a simpler structure than a virus and can live inside your cannabis plants. It won't kill them, but cannabis plants that have the hop latent viroid may grow stunted and they'll produce a lot less flower than a healthy plant would. For anyone who's trying to make money in this industry, the hop latent viroid can be absolutely devastating. Tissue culturing allows us to take the tiny parts of the plant that can't be infected by a viroid and use those to grow healthy plants. You can also heat treat micropropagated plants if you want to make sure those diseases are really gone. You can't do that to a mature plant because you would kill it. Good genes. Tissue culture micropropagation is also the best way to propagate a really high quality plant. Instead of hacking off a bunch of good material that's about to flower, you can take a little bit off and use that to create a few clones. It's way more efficient. Support your local library. Tissue culture is also a great way to keep certain genetics or good phenotypes on file, so to speak. You can keep little plantlets in sterile containers and hold on to them for a long time. And whenever someone wants to go ahead and grow one, they'll be ready. The criminalization of marijuana and hemp has led to the loss of some incredible strains, but with the power of tissue culture, we can begin to build up our libraries. Additional notes. Now, tissue culturing isn't just for the cannabis industry. There are other plants that can benefit as well. There are some plants out there that don't produce very good seed stock. So even though you can, theoretically, plant their seeds, most of them won't grow. In that case, tissue culturing is better. In my state, and probably yours as well, there are also some grasses that are natural hybrids and don't produce seeds at all. Some of them are ecologically important plants that have to be reintroduced to their original environment in order to preserve the ecosystem. When nurseries begin propagating these plants, they need a lot of them, and tissue culturing works great for that. Drawbacks. Don't get me wrong, tissue culture micropropagation is not a perfect solution. Any plant that's grown in a lab is more vulnerable to pest damage in the outside world, and tissue culturing can cause acclimation problems and poor rooting ability. Still, it's one of the best tools we have, and that's why we pay for all this fancy equipment and do all these fiddly things with scalpels and tweezers and auger mediums. 
Thanks for watching. If you have any questions about tissue culture or micropropagation in general, let me know in the comments so I can address that. Big thanks to the Plant Biotechnology Laboratory at Aligarh Muslim University in India, and especially Muhammad Anas and Naseem Ahmad.